Okay, we were almost done with 2.2, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. And if you are in my second period class, I think we've already talked about inverse. So you can listen to this again just for a review, or you can fast forward. Sorry, that cut out. If you're in my second period class, then you've already seen inverse and contrapositive. So you can fast forward to where I'm ready to talk about all four sentences together. And if you're in my third period, here we go. So the third type is called an inverse. So the inverse of a conditional statement negates both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So I've got an example written here. It says, if it is even, then it is not odd. So we have the hypothesis here. And it's not odd, I'm going to double underline. So all we need to do for the inverse is to negate the hypothesis. So we need to negate if it is even. So we need to make that the opposite. So we'll say if it is not even, comma. And then we need to negate the conclusion. So then we need to negate it is not odd. So we will negate that by removing the word not. We'll say it is odd. And that's the inverse. It negates both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Okay, the fourth type of sentence that we'll have is called the contrapositive. So the contrapositive of a conditional statement switches and negates. So it does both, switches and negates the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the conditional says, if an animal is a reptile, then it is cold-blooded. So we have an animal is a reptile is our hypothesis. It is cold-blooded is our conclusion. We need to switch those pieces and negate them at the same time. So our contrapositive says if, so we need to switch, so we need to start with this part, but as we write it down, we need to negate it. So instead of saying it is cold-blooded, we will say it is not cold-blooded. Then we'll end with this part, and instead of saying an animal is a reptile, we will say an animal is not a reptile. The original, if an animal is a reptile, then it is cold-blooded. Contrapositive, if it is not cold-blooded, then an animal is not a reptile. I just realized what I forgot to do with you all. I forgot to continue on with the if P then Q idea. So the inverse, if, if the original conditional is if P then Q, the inverse negates both of those. So it says, if not P, then not Q. That is the inverse in symbols. And the contrapositive, again, we always go back to the original. If it switches and negates, then the contrapositive would be, if not Q, then not P. Okay, so everyone should be here. We have the conditional, lots of things to get, keep straight. Converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Four different types of statements. How do we keep them straight? Well, this is what I recommend. We have C, C, I, C as the first letters. C, C, I, C, 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 I, C, okay? We've got that then. And then let's just go with our P's and Q's. The conditional, if P, then Q. 
converse switches with cube and peak. Inverse negates. If not P, then not Q. And the contrapositive switches and negates. And each one of those is going back to the original. So it switches and negates. If not Q, then not P. It's amazing how quickly you can write that down, and we'll practice that Monday. If P, then Q. If Q, then P. If not P, then not Q. If not Q, then not P. Okay, right in the middle of this section with all these statements, they give us another definition, really important definition, the definition for perpendicular lines. And it is two lines that intersect to form right angles. So if you have this line, And another one. These are long lines. And they intersect. And if you know that you have a right angle here, then we know, let's call this one L and this one M. Then we know line L is perpendicular to line M. We have a great symbol for perpendicular, and it kind of looks like the drawing that I made there. This is the perpendicular symbol. So you can see the two lines intersecting, and there's the right angle. But the perpendicular symbol doesn't have the right angle box. That's just the perpendicular symbol. So if you see line L is perpendicular to line M, that's red, line L. Oh, well, it's red right here. Line L is perpendicular to line M. There we go. Okay, we have an example we're gonna go through. We have this picture here. And it's asking, is the statement true? And the first statement is line AC is perpendicular to line BD. So there's our perpendicular state symbol. That's a five syllable word that we can quickly write down just that nice symbol there. So is line AC perpendicular to line BD? Well, here's line AC and here's line BD. They definitely intersect. And there's that right angle box, which means we have a 90 degree angle. So since they intersect and form a 90 degree angle, we would say, yes, that's true. B part says angle AEB and angle CEB are a linear pair. This could have been a true-false question on our last test. So let's find those angles. We have angle A, E, B, this angle right here, and angle C, E, B, that's this angle right here. So we're talking about this angle and this angle. Are they a linear pair? Yes. They together make up that 180 degree angle right there. And their non-adjacent sides are opposite rays. Those, all those things were a part of being a linear pair. They form a line. So yes, that's true. Oops. I'll clean up my picture a little bit. And last one here, C part says ray EA and ray EB are opposite rays. Well, let's find those. Ray EA starts at E, goes to A. Ray EB starts at E, goes to B. 
are those opposite rays? Opposite rays are supposed to be on the same line, but going in opposite directions from the same starting point. Um, these don't, so this is no, it's not true. They are perpendicular. They form that right angle, but they're not opposite rays. If we had EA, then instead of EB, we could say, I'll give you a second to think about which ray would go with EA and make an opposite ray. It would be EC. Those two are opposite rays. Okay, last definition, by conditional statement. This statement can be written when the conditional and the converse are both true. So if your conditional and your converse are both true, you can write it by, by conditional. So my conditional is going to be um, if it is 5 o'clock, then I leave work. My converse, which switches, says if I Mm, this is not a good one. This isn't always true. If I leave work, then it's 5 o'clock. Um, neither one of those are really true. So that was a bad, a bad example. I can't write a conditional from that. If it is 90 degrees, then it's a right angle. True. Converse would be if it's a right angle, then it's 90 degrees. Also true. So we can write a biconditional for it. And it says, it is a right, whoops, I'd like to start with the 90 degrees first. It is a 90 degree, third time's a charm. If it is 90 degrees, oh my gosh, fourth time's a charm, I need to go home. It is 90 degrees if and only if. It's a right angle. So what did we do to write the biconditional? We took off the if and the then, and we added in the middle, we added the words if and only if. And in this class, we're going to abbreviate if and only if with the word IFF. And that's going to be our shortcut for writing if and only if. All right. Thank you. I hope you took some good notes from this. And good luck on your homework.